morning. Good morning. And welcome once again to our online virtual Unity community. On this, well, we didn't, we couldn't decide if it was the second day of Christmas or the third day of Christmas. Maybe somebody knows. If someone knows, type it in the uh, chat. I didn't know whether Christmas was the actual first day. You know what I'm saying. It's either the, Vicki put here that it was the second day, so we'll go with that. During this novel Christmas season. So uh, let's take a, <laughs> I feel like we all need to take a deep breath and a sigh. Let's do that together. <sighs> Just bringing our awareness into this room and into this time and space so that we can be present for this awesome hour ahead of us. So breathing into this now moment together, we affirm our oneness with all beings around the world, seeking to dissolve any and all human perceived illusions of division and separation through the light of truth and love expressing in and through each of us. I'm Reverend Michelle Jalinch, and I'm here this morning with our Essential Sunday Service team, our awesome music director, Denise Headland, with John Tallon on both drums and soundboard, Robin Falkenberg doing the platform, and Martha Price doing the live stream. And we are grateful for everyone who comes together on Sunday mornings to bring this service to you. A reminder to our guests that we do require that everyone wear masks throughout the service, especially when you are up and moving about, except, of course, for those of us who are on platform um, performing, etc. And a reminder that you can hum behind your mask. Humming is safe, singing apparently is not. So let us begin this morning by affirming our unity of Monterey Bay sacred mission as an inclusive spiritual community committed to co-creating an environmentally sustainable, spiritually fulfilling, socially just and compassionate human presence on this planet. In celebrating our oneness, we honor the God of each of our understanding, and we affirm the innate goodness within every individual. Will you please join me now in our statement of faith? There is only one presence and one power in the universe, God the good, expressing as infinite God beyond us, intimate God beside us, inner God being us, divine love in action. And so now dropping even deeper into this sacred space this morning and continuing to just, let's do another one of those breaths. I need it. I'm a little out of breath this morning. Just breathing into this present moment, we pray again and continuously for the health of all those who are currently dealing with COVID-19 as well as other illnesses during this Christmas holiday season, and for the many families across the nation and, of course, across the world who are grieving the loss of their loved ones at this time. We pray also for the healthcare workers who are shouldering the massive physical, emotional, and spiritual weight of this crisis. And we continue to hold in prayer our nation that we might join together in the compassion forgiveness, and generosity of spirit that this season inspires in us, being open and receptive to the healing light, love, and wisdom of spirit. And finally this morning, I'd like to share this poem called The Work of Christmas by Howard Thurman, and I like it because it helps us remember that Christmas is, is a day that inspires us to remember these things, but we don't want it to just be on Christmas, and then we go back to our lives and forget <laughs> about what has been born in us this season. So this helps us remember. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among the people, and to make music in the heart. 
So let's let that serve as a reminder for us today and in the coming days to keep that spirit that is born in us during Christmas, keep that alive as we move through the season and into the new year. So let us now join in our 12 powers affirmation for today, which is strength. Please repeat after me. As the light of strength illumines my path. As the light of strength illumines my path. I am strong and steadfast. I am strong and steadfast. Persevering in life. Persevering in life. And so it is, so and we is. affirm that to be true. <clears throat> strength. For our announcements, we refer you to our weekly shout out. And just as always, a reminder, if you're new joining us today, you can sign up to receive our weekly newsletter on our website, unityofmontereybay.org. Scroll down, 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 and you will come to a place where you can put in your email. Our weekly shout outs contain all kinds of information, a, a blog or sort of article from Vicki, as well as um, lots of inspirational links and such, and keep you um, informed about all of the various things going on in our awesome UMV community. But just a reminder <coughs> that our Monday night meditations with Molly Steele are continuing, so that's Monday nights at 7 p.m., and the link for that is in your e-newsletter. And also a reminder that we will be having our burning bowl service this year. Like all of our special services during this season, it will be a little different because we will be doing it virtually and live streaming it over Facebook. But we hope that you will still join us for this awesome service that can help us to release what no longer serves us and prepare to usher in our good in the new year. So that service will be live streamed just like this to our Facebook page at 10 a.m., on Friday, January 1st. And if you're a member and you received your um, packet of stuff at the beginning of this season, don't forget to get your materials that we sent ready for your use. But if you didn't receive that, it's not that important. <coughs> not, it's important, but you don't have to have it. It's not essential. So please come to this awesome service anyway and, um, and release, release, release with us. So we take a moment now, as always, to bless our children. And during this time, we are also remembering each week to include all of our school teachers and as well as parents who have become homeschool teachers during this time. So just holding all of them in our hearts and lifting them up in prayer and seeing them strengthened and given that strength that we just spoke of, that perseverance, to make it through these difficult times. We have one of them right here in Robin and another one in Martha. Mm -hmm. And um, we hold them and all the teachers in our hearts. And we bring to mind the children that are close to us in our families, in our neighborhoods, as well as children all around the world. Allowing children, especially during this season, to awaken that awe and that wonder of the season. Let it awaken that in us too so that we might come as little children. So please join me in our blessing of the children. We love you. We bless you. We appreciate you just the way you are. it's time for us to center and deepen our blissful interconnection with spirit, taking a deep breath in and letting it out with an audible sigh. <sighs> Allowing all distractions to gently fade away as we invite the chime to call us into the sacred space within.
we ring the chime four times to call in the four directions and to remind us of our interconnection with all of creation and with the sacred circle of life. As we feel it resonate through our very beings, we follow its call into this now present moment within. Continuing to focus on our breath, with each inhale, we open our hearts and minds. We envision our breath reaching every cell of our being. And with each exhale, we see all barriers and obstacles dissolving into the divine flow. And again, as we inhale, we expand the spaciousness within us. We move beyond the limitations and boundaries of our bodies. And as we exhale, <coughs> or sneeze, pardon me, as we exhale, we ground ourselves deep within Mother Earth and into our oneness with the universe. Finally, we breathe our awareness into the highest expression of love, light, joy, and peace we can imagine as we experience a transforming wave of gratitude. And with a fullness of heart, we say yes to it all, embracing, claiming, and knowing the divine Christ spirit expressing in through and as us. And with a final exhale, we say thank you, God. Now fully centered and transformed by the power of spirit, we enter into our lesson and meditation time with today's daily word. We read from today's Daily Word shared with permission of Unity Publisher of Daily Word that can also be found at dailyword.com. And the word is release. I invite you to allow my words to be your words. I take the best and leave the rest. My experiences of this past year have brought me gifts of insight, new perspectives, many chances to grow and stretch myself, and perhaps the opportunity to develop a skill that serves in my work <laughs> or brings greater enjoyment to my leisure time. Some experiences have been painful or difficult. These, too, have offered their gifts. I accept all that has come my way. With gratitude, I bless it all. I find the gifts and release what no longer serves my growth. Assured that God is my dependable source, I release any pain of a financial setback. In the joy of restored health, I release any memory of illness. Grateful for all modes of connection, I release any pain of loneliness. I move forward feeling lighter, cleansed and renewed for my journey forward. And from the scriptures, do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. From Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18.
on the wisdom to the paths of many paths to the sacred, we read from three sacred traditions on this morning's topic, hope for the future. From Sikhism, now is the gracious Lord's ordinance promulgated. No one shall cause another pain or injury. All mankind shall live in peace together under a shield of administrative benevolence. From Judaism, for surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. And from Christianity, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Does this sound familiar? It goes on like this. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epic of belief. It was the epic of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. This is the opening paragraph to Charles Dickens' novel, A Tale of Two Cities, which, in which he's describing the state of affairs in 18th century France and England, but it could have been written about 2020, right? Just as Dickens' novel illustrated an age of radical opposites, so too has 2020 been a year of radical opposites, right? There's been light and darkness, hope and despair, wisdom and foolishness. Indeed, it has been the best of times and the worst of times. So there's no doubt that 2020 has been a difficult year. And I know that because I see people posting all of these memes on Facebook about how they can't wait to get rid of 2020, right? It's probably been the most difficult year that we can collectively remember in our lives, right? And I'm seeing nodding. And there is no doubt, and we must acknowledge that some really bad 
things did indeed happen this year. I don't know what the current number is, but a whole lot of people lost their lives to COVID-19. And there are families all around the world that are grieving the losses of their loved ones. Also this year, a black man suffocated to death under a police officer's knee. And our United States democracy faced some real threats to its existence, at least definitely to our faith in it. This year, we've been forced to see some hard truths about our world, about our country. And these things that we saw this year, they were already there. They already existed, right? It's just that we were living in a certain level of blissful oblivion to those things. And this year, those things were uncovered. They were brought into greater clarity. Things like the vast disparities in our access to health care and our broken health care system. The deeply rooted racism that still exists in our culture. The fact that our nation has these long-standing wounds from slavery, from the genocide of Native Americans, and from the mistreatment of group after group of immigrants. And these wounds need healing the inadequacies and challenges in our public school system have been exposed. And so many, many stones have been turned over this year and we have been able to see the grubs and little critters that were crawling around underneath them in the darkness. That had always been there, right? That had always been there. So in many ways, this year we the worst of ourselves, the worst of humanity was laid bare for all of us to see. And I know that it has been hard, harder for some than others. It has been at turns terrifying, depressing, isolating, exhausting, right? Frustrating, boring, and tragic. And we need to honor these feelings and the grief that surrounds them. It doesn't help for us to brush them aside or spiritually bypass them. In the past, when we've studied Robert Brummett's book, Finding Yourself in Transition, we learned from him that every loss, every ending involves grief. And that we must grieve each and every one of our losses in order to move through them in a healthy way. It can also help us to move through some of our losses and challenges if we can see even the most painful and challenging times in terms of what we learned. It doesn't negate the grief, okay? But we can still look at what we learned. And this year has given us unique opportunities to become aware, to become awake to many things, right? And to reflect deeply on our lives. We reflected on what's important and what's not, what we can live without and what we don't really need. We, we reflected on what our priorities truly are, and this is going to help us as we begin to restructure our lives in accordance with what really matters to us, instead of just going along on autopilot like we had been. And so although in 2020 we sometimes saw what seemed to be the very worst of humanity, the best of humanity was also made plain. This year we saw incredible human ingenuity. We saw a vast human capacity for generosity and for kindness. We saw the selflessness, the endless selflessness of healthcare workers. And we saw the resilience of planet Earth and many of its species. So today, we're going to look at what we learned in 2020. And we do this not to brush aside the grief and the pain and the challenges, but to acknowledge the good, which is our practice here at Unity, to acknowledge the good and to bring some balance into the way we are going to look back at this year retrospectively and also to solidify those things in our mind, those good things, those things that we learned so that we can integrate them and make sure that we don't forget them, right? As things slowly but surely begin to return to some semblance of normalcy. 
So we're going to look today at what we learned this year, 2020, about our world, about our community, and about ourselves. Let's begin with what we learned this year about our world. Well, one thing that became obvious very quickly is that we are indeed capable of saving the planet. We are capable of reducing carbon emissions and restoring health to the environment. During the quarantine and shutdown time when people were not working like normal, there was less industry, we saw a significant decrease in pollution and in greenhouse gas emissions around the globe. Obviously, fewer cars on the highway, fewer airplanes in the sky, resulted in improved air and water quality all around the world. And because of COVID-19, when telecommuting became necessary for many, many jobs, this also obviously decreased our carbon emissions. And because we had the opportunity to see that telecommuting does in fact work, many folks will be continuing to work from home in the following months and years because we saw that it worked. And so that will have a beneficial um, effect on the environment, not to mention people's lives, right, of being able to be home with their families and such. This year, we also learned that we are closer and more connected than we ever realized. You know, we talk a lot about unity and oneness, but this year we really got to see it as this pandemic hit everywhere across the globe, right? People were experiencing this. We were experiencing it collectively, whether we were in Africa or South America, Dubai or Shanghai. Our common humanity and our common fragility was laid bare for us, right? And it was at once frightening and beautiful. It was awe-inspiring and humbling. Something being so incredibly contagious allowed us to see how our behavior daily affects one another. We learn to wear masks because they mostly protect the other person. We opted to forego get-togethers with older family members and friends because it would put them at risk. We learned this year that the earth can and will regenerate itself if we get out of the way. The canals in Venice ran clear for the first time because there were, there were no boats in them. The birds could be heard singing in cities where no one had ever heard birds singing before. The skies above Mexico City were clear of pollution. And then we saw incredible stories of wildlife returning to the parks, lakes, streams, and rivers where the hum our human presence had previously driven them out, right? Here's some awesome examples. You may have seen some of these on the internet or on social media. I remember seeing these amazing pictures of lions lounging around on the roads that were normally um, filled with safari tourists. And here were these lions acting like they owned the place, right? <laughs> that was awesome. There was a juvenile mountain lion who prowled the deserted sidewalks of San Francisco. Javelinas took over the street corners in Phoenix. Those are the little wild piggies that live in Arizona. And bears and coyotes were wandering around Yosemite National Park in California, which was empty of tourists for the first time since the Spanish flu epidemic of 1919. Dolphins returned to the beaches in Mexico when the tourists were no longer there. The Sierra Club said that this pandemic is giving us the chance to reset our relationship with the animal world. What an amazing opportunity in the same era that we are seeing polar bears starving to death, right, because of the melting ice. It's giving us a chance to reset our relationship with the animal world. And we've been hearing reports of uh, numerous species that previously were thought endangered, that they're making a comeback due to decreased human activity. Bee populations in the United States are benefiting from the decline in air pollution. Baby turtles are hatching on the beaches in India and Mexico that are empty of tourists. The humpback whales are benefiting from decreased cruise traffic because the noise pollution and sonar that the cruises use interfere with them and their migration patterns and such. Rare pink dolphins are returning to Hong Kong 
during the shutdown when the ferry traffic has been halted. All over the world, animals are taking back their habitats while humans are quarantining at home. This should be a wake-up call to us, right? How quickly, how quickly it happened. We are being told loud and clear. However, the effects of these things will be reversed and will go right back to normal if we simply return to the way things were and don't make any changes. The Earth will have enjoyed a nice little break, but no lasting or real change will occur. And so this lockdown quarantine has given us a chance to see what nature is capable of when we get the heck out of the way, right? And stop destroying it. And so we can say that 2020 has given us a chance to glimpse a possible future, a future that is possible, where we can work from home and we can commute less and fly less and we can reduce our carbon emissions and we can allow animals' habitats to be restored. But will we be changed by what we've seen? And will we resolve to do better in the future? That's what remains to be seen. What did we learn this year about our community? Well, we learned, first and foremost, that we need each other. We learned that it turns out that Netflix and takeout food and the internet is not all we really need. Although technology has helped us tremendously in staying connected with one another, it turns out that what we most need is each other. Are we surprised by this? <laughs> the awesome technology, it was helpful, but it's no substitute for human interaction. Hopefully, if we remain awake, we will never again take for granted the warmth of a hug the human closeness of our friends and family, of our church families. We also learned this year how much, how very much we need our pets. Three quarters of Americans that have cats said that they couldn't have gotten through the quarantine without their pet. Let's hear it for cats. <laughs> I'm team cat myself. <laughs> Apparently, these people reported that the cats eased their anxiety, quelled their feelings of loneliness, gave them someone to talk to, and brought positivity to their days. Now, this might sound funny for folks who have families, partners around them, but think of folks who live alone. Think of elderly people. For a lot of folks, their pet is their family, is the one they interact with. Our pets even provided some humor this year. There were lots of memes about how dogs were thrilled with the shutdown because they're like, <laughs> you know, they're so happy, their owners are home and they're getting all these walks and cats are like, go back to work, right? And then I just started hearing recently that dogs are ready for the shutdown to be over because their humans are walking them too much. Apparently they don't need 12 walks a day. This year we learned that the real heroes in our society are the healthcare workers. We thought that they were our athletes, right? And I know I have them fighting words because I got some serious rabid giant fans in this congregation. <laughs> I'm not saying sports isn't good, but <laughs> when sports were shut down because of the quarantine, we were able to see that the real MVPs are the doctors, the nurses, the first responders, the healthcare workers of all kinds who were there when we needed them. Maybe even saved our lives and worked tirelessly around the clock to keep us safe. We also learned to appreciate some of the real unsung heroes of our community. We didn't even know what essential workers were until this happened. Well, now we've come to seriously appreciate those essential workers without whom we couldn't have survived during the pandemic. Our lives would not have been able to go on with at least as much normalcy as they did. So let's think about some of them right now. Mail carriers. Shout out to John Dundon, one of our very own, who's been carrying the mail faithfully and taking lots of uh, overtime hours and working very hard round the clock. Grocery clerks, gas, gas station attendants, restaurant workers, pharmacists, bank tellers, garbage men or sanitation technicians or whatever they're, <laughs> garbage men and women. <laughs> and perhaps especially the migrant workers who continue to pick our food 
especially those right here in our own backyards, in the Salinas Valley, where, incidentally, the majority of COVID cases in our county have occurred. The migrant workers ha have been, farm workers have been forced to continue working due to fear of losing their job or because they literally had to work to feed their children. These agricultural workers, the very folks who have been vilified and scapegoated again and again by the current administration, it's because of them that we were able to continue eating fresh salads during the pandemic that we were able to have lettuce on our sandwiches and continue to enjoy things like fresh strawberries, artichokes, and broccoli throughout the pandemic. We would not have fresh produce without our migrant workers. We also learned this year that humans are so incredibly creative and smart. You probably have seen, like me, just vast creativity across the internet. Families making funny videos, dressing up in costumes and such. One of my favorite things was how local, um, local high school students who were graduating and weren't going to get to have a graduation, we all remember how important that high school graduation is, right? Well, a lot of the local high schools were holding their graduations on our Laguna Seca racetrack. That's a way to kind of make it a memorable, cool thing to remember, right? They drove their cars up the racetrack, stopped, got their diploma, and got back in. I mean, that's a pretty cool, I, I thought that was ingenious. Remember what we saw on the internet, those aerobics classes being taught on the roof in, I think it was Italy, where there was someone down on one of the lower roofs leading it and people were on their balconies? Brilliant. How about the musical collaborations that we saw people singing balcony to balcony, or the incredible musical collaborations we saw on Zoom, where people, uh, who were quarantining at home, famous people and not famous people, were all brought together to sing a song together. Humans are incredibly creative. What about our teachers? God bless our teachers. They somehow managed to move to a completely new platform overnight, right? And turn what had always been in-person schooling to online schooling virtually overnight. And they did it without a lot of help and support. Yes. <laughs> Even older teachers who lacked technological skills, they learned how to use the technology in record time. And they did it. Why? Because of their love for our children. We also learned this year that humans are incredible, uh, are, incredible are capable of incredible kindness. We saw neighbors helping one another for the first time, right? Offering to do grocery shopping or to pick up prescriptions for elderly neighbors. Folks checking in on one another on nextdoor.com and such. People they had not even spoken to previously, maybe they lived next to them for years, but suddenly they were looking after one another. Some awesome examples I was able to find was a lonely grandmother who received over a thousand Christmas cards from folks around the world. There was a secret Santa who anonymously paid off all of the layaway items at Walmart in Mississippi. And then there was a really cool pay it forward chain, you know, in the drive through. This was a drive through at the Dairy Queen in Minnesota where you pay for the person's meal behind you and then they pay for the one. This went on for 900 cars. <laughs> 900 cars. It's really easy to dismiss these as isolated incidents, but we have seen them coming across our social media accounts over the past nine months, and we should see them as what they are. Solid evidence that humans are capable of incredible kindness selflessness, and compassion. Finally, we turn to ourselves. What did we learn about ourselves this year? Well, I think topping the list is probably that we learned that our people, our friends, family, church families, are, they matter more to us, so much more than our stuff, right? Even though many of us were quarantining at home in first world relative luxury, let's not forget that, all of our creature comforts could not replace our relationships with our friends and family, community, neighbors. 
we also learned that we can entertain ourselves endlessly. You gotta laugh. The creativity I saw on the internet this year was just amazing. Like I say, I saw families making funny videos together that were just brilliant. I'm like, how did they come up with this stuff? People are so smart and funny and talented. Uh, people teaching online master classes, you know, from their homes. People taking up brand new hobbies or learning new skills. Remember the sourdough starter? <laughs> Families playing board games together for the first time ever. How cool is that? We also learned this year that we can slow down when we are forced to. Being forced to stay at home for more time than ever before in our lives has been challenging, but what if it has been a unique opportunity? Father Richard Rohr, he asks us, what if the challenges of the current moment are actually offering us an invitation to let go of our ideas of freedom and mobility and to consciously participate with reality in a new way? Well, it turns out that staying in place is an actual spiritual practice which comes from the monastic tradition, and it's called stabilitas loci, remaining in one place. Now, obviously, we are not all going to go and join a monastery or sit in a cave in, uh, help me, Nepal. But we have all had an opportunity to do some of this staying in place during the quarantine. And this practice, this stabil stabilitas loci, this practice of staying in our place is intended as a discipline to discipline the ego by removing its alternative to get up and go somewhere. We couldn't. <laughs> there was nowhere to go, right? Father Rohr explains that the ego reflects a mentality that always wants to keep an exit open. And therefore, it can never come to complete surrender and acceptance, that ego. And so he says that we can, we can learn from saying to ourselves, this is my place. This is my situation. This is what is right now. And working towards our acceptance of what is, what is true right now, right here in my place, can help us to free ourselves from the ego's grip. Father Rohr, who spent many years in actual hermitage spiritual retreat, says that when he did that, he found a deep inner liberation in giving up my freedom to come and go as I chose. He said he ex we are experiencing or he's experiencing some of that same freedom in our hermit-like life that's been necessitated by the pandemic. This is what he learned. I cannot fill my life or myself up with outside experiences. Right? When those outside experiences are removed as a possibility, we realize that we must simply be with ourselves and with God. So we may not have become hermits, may not, maybe we didn't do it to that extent, but we have been doing some of this spiritual practice without even knowing it. And we learned that we are capable of acceptance, of radical acceptance. As the lockdown stretched on and on and on, our brains tried again and again to figure things out. Right? To devise a way to solve this situation, to get ourselves out of this pandemic mess. And over and over again, we weren't able to solve it, we weren't able to fix it, and so we had to come back to that same place. Acceptance. Right? What else could we do? What else could we do? So we ended up practicing something that we didn't even know we could do. We took a deep breath. We accepted our circumstances that were out of our control, and we made the best of it. Yes, we did. And these are skills that we can carry with us into the future. Even as things begin to return, return to some normalcy, this ability to accept things we can't change and accept things the way they are will serve us greatly in our lives. We learned that we can stand to do a lot less. We learn to take naps, take leisurely walks just because, and to enjoy quiet hobbies or just 
do nothing. <gasps> just do nothing. So out of our comfort zone to just do nothing. We learned that we can indeed live more simply and more quietly than we thought we were capable of. Yes, we miss many of our activities, no doubt, but many of us have also come to appreciate, right, the slowing down, the pace of our lives, those quiet days at home where we sometimes didn't even drive for days and subsequently didn't have to fill up our gas tank for like a week or two at a time, right? That wasn't a bad thing. It's times when we didn't leave the house for days at a time. And we began to get used to that less running around, not running around crazy all the time and having more downtime. This cannot be a bad thing. <laughs> we learned some of the joys of simpler things that had gotten lost in our frenetic lifestyle. People began to return to things like baking, needlepoint, painting, reading, meditating. Many of us had time, time to get back to some of the things we once enjoyed, but we had gotten too busy to do. I started playing the piano again for the first time in years. You know, folks broke out their sewing machines, dusted them off, and put their skills to good use, making masks for their friends and family and neighbors. Remember when masks weren't available yet on the internet and they were a new thing? My neighbors were giving them to me. I had five masks, like in one day, you know, because they were pulling out their sewing machines and putting those skills to good use. Finally, we learned that we are smarter, stronger, and more resilient than we thought we were. When the quarantine first began, we never could have imagined how long it would last or that we would make it through almost a whole year of it already. But here we are. We did it, we have done it, and we are survivors. So, even if you didn't write the great American novel, and you didn't Marie Kondo your house, and you didn't take an online master class in starting your own home business, you didn't perfect your beef bourguignon, you have made it through a difficult time. You have survived, and in many ways, thrived. Even the negative things that happened this year can serve a purpose if we allow them to. We learned this year that racism is alive and well in America, even worse than we thought. And this is sad, it's painful, it's disturbing. But it was necessary clarity for us to get because we cannot fix what we don't see. In the media, I've seen this time called the Great Awakening, when human beings started waking up and began to demand a racial reckoning and social justice. And we have entered a time of a renewed civil rights movement, and faith communities have been at the forefront of that movement. This year, we learned that many of our institutions are broken and need to be repaired. Our healthcare system, our school system, our law enforcement, all of these have shown us their vast failings this year. But again, it was necessary for us to see this and in fact be shocked by it, right? Because we've been shocked in order for us to do something about it. It turns out oblivion is not so blissful. As hard as it is, we need to see the truth of our reality so that we can get to work fixing what is broken and improving what is lacking. And all of it, all of it calls us back again to our faith in God, to our belief and our faith in the goodness of God, the goodness of one another, and the goodness of ourselves. This time has required us to hold to what we know to be the truth. That the material world is imperfect, it's fallible, it's not always as we want it to be. In fact, a good part of the time it's not. But God's goodness is infallible, eternal, and unchanging. And when everything else falls apart, we know that we can count on God's goodness. We here at Unity of Monterey Bay have built our lives on one of our favorite sayings. Say it with me now. God is good all the time. All the time. 
And so this year, when nothing seemed clear and when everything seemed wonky and we couldn't recognize our own lives anymore, we returned again and again to this mantra, God is good all the time. Even when we couldn't see it, when we couldn't understand it, we don't have to understand it. We don't have to figure it out. All we have to do is believe in it and hold to it. We can stake our faith on God's goodness, and when necessary, we can rebuild our lives on the rock of that truth. So as we prepare to bring this 2020 to a close, let's ask ourselves, can we let go of what has been? Let go of our disappointments and our grieving and our losses and let go of what we no longer need? Can we bless this year instead of, you know, trying to mm, boot it on the way out and um, calling it all kinds of names? Can we bless it? Can we bless this year for all it has taught us as we lovingly send it on its way, right? Can we prepare to enter the new year with a fresh slate, with a renewed faith, with a sense of hope and expectancy? Can we open ourselves wide to receive our good in the new year? Rumi said, I will find new meaning in every joy and sorrow. In that silence, I will hear the voice of spirit and freed from this world, I will see another world where the end is another beginning. And so now, more than ever, we need to hold to one of our other sayings, and we haven't been saying this as we've changed up the script, but I'm going to bring it back now because it's a good one. And I'll end with this. The good is now, the rest is blessed, and the best is yet to be. And may it be so, and I affirm that it is so. Amen and amen. Now, if you haven't already done so, I invite you to get comfortable where you're sitting, close your eyes if it's comfortable, and begin to bring your awareness to your breath. As you feel yourself breathing in slowly and deeply, and breathing out, you can say to yourself as you breathe in, God is here, and as you exhale, I am home. Again, breathing in, God is here. Exhaling, I am home. And keep it real simple today. Just keep your awareness on your breath. That gentle breathing in 
and breathing out. For these next few moments, that's all you have to do. Allow your body to become quiet, your mind to settle down, releasing the tension in the muscles of your body, places you may be holding, gritting your teeth, shrugging your shoulders, places we don't even realize. Just allow those places to relax as you continue to breathe in and breathe out. The more we do this, the more we cultivate this place. This place of just being. That stabilitas loci. Being, remaining in our place. Let it be simple. Simply be aware that you're breathing in and aware that you're breathing out. And when the mind begins to go, you just say, oh, hello there. Not right now, thank you. And come back to your breath as you breathe in and breathe out. In this place of peace and calmness and silence, we know the truth of God's goodness. We feel that relief in our bodies, in our minds, in our hearts, in our souls as we can just be. In this place of peace, it becomes natural to us to say, this is where I am right now. This is what's happening. This is my body sitting here breathing. For this moment in time, I accept my life, myself, and the world just as it is. Not as I would have it, but just as it is. Now I invite you to just let that simple, simple thought bring you peace as you rest for a few moments in the silence. I accept my life, myself, and this world just as it is. Not as I would have it, but just as it is in this moment. Let this practice bless you and bring you peace.
And so it is. Amen. Unity of Monterey Bay is the collective consciousness and commitment of all of us who give of our time, treasure, and talent in order to sustain this spiritual community that is dedicated to transforming lives. We know that prosperity is a state of mind that finds blessings in every situation and abundance in joyous generosity. We transform all appearance of fear or lack into a faith-filled peace of mind by shifting our attention to thoughts of gratitude for the abundance of God's good in our lives. And with our hearts and minds overflowing with gratitude, we breathe into the divine flow of God's good, trusting that we are enough, that we have enough, and that there always is enough to both have and to share. Again, we are grateful to all of you for your online giving through our website at unityofmontereybay.org and through your mailed-in offerings, including those who have set up automatic giving with your banking institutions. We are truly blessed. And now, from this place of faith and gratitude, I invite you to join me in mindful intention and joining in our offertory blessing. I, I am an, an open, open channel, channel for God's infinite good, divine love flowing through me, blesses and multiplies everything I give and everything I receive. I am both blessed and a blessing. Thank you, God. to just acknowledge and give thanks for our awesome music team, as well as Sloan Wainwright, Sue Riley, Karen Drucker, Glenn Rothel, Bob McGee, and Jimmy Holiday, Randy Myers, and Jackie DeShannon for their music. So as we begin to prepare to bring our service to a close this morning, we are so grateful that you have joined us here on this last Sunday of 2020, and we hope that we've made you feel at home here in our community. And we want you to know that wherever you are on your spiritual path, you are welcome here. 
We invite you, if you have prayer requests, to submit them on our unityofmontereybay.org website and be assured that they will be prayed on by our prayer chaplains as well as sent on to Silent Unity. And we will be having our virtual coffee hour after the service at 1115. So with all of that, before we make our closing circle, I found these words by somebody called Mandy Hale. Don't know who she is, but I wanted to share these words with you as we go into this last week of the year and prepare for um, the ending of the year and the new year to begin. I hope you find some time this week to get really, really quiet to curl up in a big cozy chair and watch a movie you've seen a million times before, to hug the people you love, to wrap up in a warm blanket and read a good book, to drink hot cocoa from a Christmas mug, to stand outside in the crisp night air and marvel at the stars. I hope you find time this week to sit silently in front of your life and contemplate how magical it really is before we turn the page and greet a new year. So that's my blessing for you this week. Let's make our circle for our prayer for protection and our peace song. So holding all those on our prayer request list, all those who are in need of prayer in our church family, in our community, and around the world as we join in our prayer for protection. The light, light of, of God, God surrounds, surrounds us. I, I am the light of God. God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. week stay safe be well and may you know the joy and peace of the love of God